measures is apparent and reinforced by activities in both the National Human Rights Action Plan and the LLRC Action Plan, which have both been adopted by Cabinet. But if we wait for the various agencies now responsible, we'll have to wait forever, particularly in the case of educational innovation. I can understand the need for the country to have a popular education minister, given that much of what is done by the ministry really relates to dealing with individual demands about schools admission and appointments and transfers. But unless we adopt alternative mechanisms for policy changes, the excellent systems in place in the model school the Minister of Education has himself started will not benefit the vast majority of, my of our children. And it's a wonderful school, but when we keep saying do it everywhere, he says the political fallout will be impossible to deal with. Because this is a school in which the teachers work all day, they work till four o'clock, they do extracurricular activities, they work in English medium, and if that's good enough for Panipite, it should be good enough for our rural areas too. But I'm afraid it will not happen if we leave it to populist policies. So taking that model as a starting point, and since it is probably impossible given vested interests and the need to stay popular of advancing reforms in existing institutions, we should allow new schools to be started provided that they carry out to the letter government policies with regard to social integration. Not only bring youngsters of different social and ethnic backgrounds together, but also ensuring opportunity for social advancement. The LLRC action plan suggests a policy to encourage ethnically mixed schools and ensuring that schools include programs to provide intercommunity interactions. The human rights action plan draws attention to the variations in the quality of education and inadequate access to quality education at tertiary level while suggesting the need to reduce inter and intradistrict disparities in the provision of quality vocational and technical education. Compensation for these deficiencies has written already in the vast number of private initiatives giving English medium education in rural districts and university qualifications through links with international universities. I see no reason to stop this, but it is tragic that encouragement is not given to the non-profit sector to start schools while also asking them to charge fees but provide scholarships and ensure ethnic integration. I know the Catholic Church is more than willing to do this, but we should also encourage the Mahabodhi Society the, uh, and the Hindu organizations and the Muslim organizations to do the same. But in all cases, the state should insist on such schools admitting an ethnic mix. This is obviously an area in which the Ministry of Defense school can help. It has started one school, but it can do more throughout the country. I remember in Diyatalava, I suggested many years ago that the SLMA take over management of one of the Diyatalava schools to ensure quality education to officers who could then be with their families for the children of uh, other ranks and as well as for local children. In the midst of other pressing concerns, that suggestion could not be taken forward, but it should be taken forward now with similar initiatives in the capitals of districts in the north where the army has a significant presence. The Secretary of Defense exp explained the need, which I fully concur with, of continuing to have a non-obtrusive military Proceed program. with twinning of schools and joint activities, as mentioned in the LLRC action plan. Through the association set up in my Reconciliation Office for Religion, Education and Peace and Pluralism, we have written to various ministers of education concerned for permission and support for a program in which schools from the south would develop partnerships. The schools would work with other schools in the north but also do joint social service projects because integration occurs, as I said, when people work together or learn together. Some schools are already working on this. The Hindu schools had a meeting a couple of weeks ago to also start an initiative. And all these schools that do the best of Colombo schools would also encourage extracurricular activities because many schools in deprived areas and not only in the north do not have such extracurricular activities. In privileged areas, there are clubs for sports and cultural activities and social service. But smaller schools are without these, which is yet another reason why their products find employment difficult. This is again another area in which the forces can help. I know that in some areas in the north they help with sports, but they can do much more, especially with regard to social service activities, guides, scouts, cadetting, St. John's Ambulance, disaster management. 
Such training should incorporate the building up of interregional and interethnic teams with training camps for particular skills, responses to flood, drought, tsunami, landslides. Both the LLRC and the Human Rights Action Plan also mention the need for human rights education for children, but I think this should also be taken up in a holistic fashion in terms of social interventions on a broader scale. I know I have made several suggestions and I'm afraid run over my time, but I hope at least some of these will be taken up by the KDU and the Ministry. The achievements of the last few years were due to constant training, careful planning, and continuing assessment of progress. These are traits the military has developed and they must be introduced into the population at large. The ability to work as a team is something the nation has lost in the years since independence. And I hope those of you who have managed to produce excellent work and focused teamwork will also help to promote the social integration we need so badly. Thank you.